Oh my gosh. I can't believe you're saying that. We got Brandy in the house. Hi, Brandy. Hi. How are, How are you? I'm doing good. I'm so thrilled. You have no idea how badly I've been begging for this. <laughs> oh, I'm so looking forward to it. So a couple things I want to bring yeah. up. <laughs> I got to highlight within the family um, a number of different people. There is a very strong acknowledgement of two people that come through together. One would be a younger male and then one would be a little older, but they come through together. And there's an acknowledgement of a sense of togetherness. If people wondered when this younger male went, if they would be together. I just want to have to say like these two are like a group. Uh, they come as one <laughs> is the way that I would work this. And I need to acknowledge not that as not being alone, not being alone. The next thing I want to say is I want to joke about somebody's either dirty 30 or 30 or a conversation <laughs> around this in some way. It sometimes can refer to things that people have been discussing or if there's like a big emphasis on the 30th birthday, do you know of anyone turning 30 or any conversations around that? Um, I mean, I just turned 31 um, and he would always um, like comment on like when it was his dirty 30, he made a huge emphasis on it. And he's like, are we gonna do the same thing when you turn 30? Um, so that's funny, yeah. How was he able to see you hit 30? Yes, he was. Gotcha. Okay. So and we're kind of in that, in that yeah. realm. So it's an interesting thing. It just kind of brings me back to timelines. And when I talk about yeah. this guy, um, there's a very strong intensity that comes across with him. Um, he gives me this very strong sense of you understanding him when other people didn't fully understand him. And there's this kind of sense of being misunderstood, to be completely honest. <laughs> if someone yeah. felt like people didn't either take them the right way or get them fully, I feel like you did. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a kind of strong acknowledgement around that, that that comes through. Yeah. There's um, an aspect. Give me one sec here. Oh. So within your family, this should be relatively straightforward. I have to highlight the three. So how many siblings do you have? Um, I have three. Um, yeah, I, I have three. I My brother, which is whom you're speaking with, um, was my only full-blooded sibling. And then I have a half sibling. Gotcha. Um, so that would be the three. Gotcha. So it's just kind of acknowledging the, that grouping in some kind of larger capacity. Oh. And then for some mm -hmm. reason, there's discussions, and this is going to sound kind of funny, but you need to know that you were like his protector, or I know that's a weird thing to say because very often, like, you'll have brother figures protecting sisters, but I need you to know you protected him. He feels like you provided some form of protection, and I don't know why. Could you potentially understand? You don't have to say why, but how that could kind of fit. Um, I think just defending him. Yeah because he was so misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. It just feels like if I know that you were on my team and you were always going to be on my team, even when other people didn't fully get it. And there's just a yeah. deep degree of appreciation that comes through with that. Uh, there's a funniness he wants to bring up around music blaring or going off when it's not necessarily <laughs> supposed to. And that being a sign yeah. that he has tried to send. So are you aware of that one? Um, Slightly, yes. I, I have um, a, a problem with leaving the music on very loud. Um, at, like when I exit the car during the evening and then in the morning, it'll scare my husband. Um, so I think I think that's what he's referring to. Um, but he could definitely, I don't listen to music that often because I have two young children. So yes. <laughs> that might be what it is. You gotta bump it when we get the chance, right? When the, when the kids exactly, are yes. When you're in the, yeah, like at nighttime, you're in a whole different personality zone when you are, you know, at 8 a.m. So yeah. Absolutely. It's kind of a weird thing. Do you have a garage door? We do, yeah. Is there something wrong with the garage door that you know of? Or do you know of any repairs recently with the garage door? <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe you're saying that. Um, yeah, so <laughs> every time I try to close the garage door and it only happens to me, like it will not close. It just keeps going up and down, up and down, up and down. And so I get out of the car like six times and I'm like, I swear garage, if you do not close, yes. 
and I never knew what was causing it. Like I couldn't find anything in the way, you know, nothing was in the sensor. Um, so that's funny. <laughs> so random, but oftentimes like <laughs> it's those little weird yeah. things that come in. Um, when we talk that's about his, his situation, um, are you privy to his love life? Yeah. Okay. Um, was yeah. that heavy? <laughs> yeah. There's a trickiness with this that comes through. He has me talk about his passing, and then he has me kind of talk about a, a, a cross. I don't know, man. Let me figure out how to. I need a drink of water for this one. <laughs> Give me. Yeah, one take your time. Um, it's a lot. Okay. Hypothetically, if someone were in a position where romantically they had to kind of pick between one person or someone else. Um, this might not click with what we know, but I just have to say what I'm getting. There's some yeah, aspect of, of like, historically, I feel like I can't choose or be fully all in when it talk when we're talking about like love life relationships. I feel constantly pulled to this secondary thing and I j it just kind of keeps me in limbo and not fully able to connect with either because I'm kind of going back and forth with each. There's such a weird thing to say. I could be completely wrong, and please feel free to say if, if that doesn't connect at all. But do you know of like this go between between two people romantically? I don't think it's romantic in that sense. Um, it was between my mom and um, his girlfriend. Um, there was a lot of trauma with his upbringing that he was projecting into his relationship. Gotcha. So I he was being pulled. Like I'm going to oh, go ahead. Two. I feel like I'm having to pick in essence between one or the other. I just been kind of viewing yeah. this as somewhere where I would live, which is kind of strange. So like, it, it's weird. Okay. This comes in, I have to figure out my long-term living situation and then like deciding whether we cut someone off or keep them in our life or cut them off or keep them in our life. And it's like a, an emphasis on codependency, toxicity, like a lot of stuff there that comes in. Do you know on mom's side of family if there were any alcoholics? So many. Yeah. So many. One big thing that comes through is female alcoholism and it's just a susceptibility on that side to be mindful of. Yeah. And if people have mm -hmm. gotten sober and put an emphasis on sobriety or moderation, it's just kind of, again, a, an acknowledgement of breaking those kind of generational cycles. And that comes in for you. Yeah. If there were any questions you had related to the brother figure as far as around his situation, this is kind of weird also. <laughs> Remember that I'm saying this, I'm wanting to call someone Ducky. This is very, very left field. Ducky or Dookie, but I'm going to like that. Um, <laughs> It's so strange. It reminds me of like a reference. There was like an old dinosaur cartoon where Ducky was a character. That's the only thing I can think of. You want to know what's hilarious? His favorite um, cartoon was um, The Land Before Time. Yes, Ducky is from it. Wasn't, wasn't Ducky? Yeah, <laughs> that was his favorite childhood movie. Um, so that's really funny that you brought so, that up. So weird. The voice actress of Ducky sadly passed away and, and came through, of all things. That's why I have kind of a unique connection to that. Oh my god! Okay. So I'm seeing all that symbology in association with him, and I'm like, what is this? But it, it does come in. Um, when it comes to just the nature of the situation, one thing to keep in mind is he'll be honored, of course, on the timing in which he passed, you know, anniversaries. But remember that I'm saying yeah. this, I also feel like he'll be honored on a holiday, and I don't know why. So it's okay. like two dates he'll be honored. We got like the obvious oh. one, and then kind of like right. more non-obvious one. But I'm putting more of a okay. holiday or a celebratory feeling. Um, one thing that pops in... Uh, here. Oi, oi, oi. One sec there, because I just want to make sure I cover that base. Yeah. There's some stuff there related to love. Okay. 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 This is interesting. In the world. <laughs> I get to the bottom of this one. 
this is gonna sound nuts, my friend, but um, check and see in the next month if anyone, either in your household or immediately connected to the family, is considering repainting a room. <laughs> I'm seeing paint and paint selection and committing to a paint color and a whole conversation around that. And I know that might sound so left field, but I can't make a change. Do you know of any conversations? I want to paint the house so bad, but we're renting it. And um, my husband can't wrap his head around uh, paying for the <laughs> to change the walls. Um, and I want to like redo everything so badly. Like that's always on the forefront of my brain. Um, but I'm wondering if it's maybe targeted towards his children. Yes. Gotcha. This is interesting in the way this comes in. Also, I, I do have to bring up when it comes to him, I'm having to associate two colors connected to him. And I don't know why two colors, not just one. Okay. Um, if, if there's like a dual tone object, so like something red and black or blue and black, I don't know why I'm going there. I'm going to like two colors, two tone, okay. and then sentimental. And that's just good to keep in mind. If someone finds that, is looking at it, I feel like I have to bring that up. But okay. truly, this guy comes across as so much more than how he passed. He puts a funniness around music um, and just kind of a, a, a silliness um, to a much higher degree. But when he yeah. comes in, um, I do feel like he will be honored in a much larger context. So, I do have a question. Yes, please. Associated with his passing. Um, I'm sure, as you know, it was very tragic. Um, he was left there for quite some time waiting for an ambulance. Um, and he had somebody with him the entire time um, that said he was trying to communicate. Um, and I was just wondering what he was trying to say. So often that's a very, very normal question. We wanna know what was it that they were trying to get off their chest. I do find that sometimes the shock of those situations uh, sometimes can put people in positions of wanting to say a lot of things. Sometimes it's as simple as I love you or what just happened um, or something else entirely. So when we scribble on this, um, one thing that does come to mind, this is kind of interesting. Okay, and a, and that's interesting. I don't usually get N names like as in Nat. in the way that, that I, I want to bring this up uh, is clear. I have to talk about oh, one of your other siblings so I know we mentioned the three acknowledgement oh no there's a, an emphasis on the other sibling and a disconnect there and wanting to bring that up yeah and I keep getting a sense of an apologetic nature of this like I'm resolved with this I'm resolved with this I'm resolved with this but it just feels like this kind of left a situation and that, that keeps coming in. Uh, I can't make a change. So it's a way of then acknowledging peace, but realizing that a situation that they left behind you know, was kind of unresolved. Yeah. I understand where that aspect fits. Um, I, for some reason, there's a very strong emphasis on like a female contemporary. I would be viewing this as something akin to um, like a girlfriend, like a spouse, like a partner. And we kind of go yeah. there. I have to talk about um, this person strangely being surprised where I'm at. What in the world? I'm confused. So this is weird. We're talking about girlfriend, presumably, or what would be like the female yeah. contemporary. Still very much alive. Did she not yeah. know exactly where he was? Nobody did. It's weird. And then I feel like I talk about discovery. And there's an acknowledgement of wanting her to know where I am. Um, and then I have to talk about proximity of where I'm at. And then do you know if blood loss contributed to anything at all? 
probably. I, I, um, internal bleeding? I, I don't mean to be graphic. But... That makes sense. No, please do, because we we don't have any of the information. It kind of seems like... Um, but yeah, we nobody knew what actually... Okay. Like, what his injuries were. Um, and so we assumed it was internal bleeding um since i mean just to put it point blank he was um hit by a car on his motorcycle um and he jumped from his bike um into oncoming traffic because he thought that would be easier um on his bike than if he would have just stayed on his bike. Um, and then he was pinned, he was ran over and pinned um, by another vehicle. Um, and he was trapped under there. His whole pelvis um, was flattened um, because the tire was on there. So I believe that that's probably yeah. what caused it. But he was like I said on his way home on his bike to go back to his kids um because it was getting dark and he never drove um when it got dark um and so nobody knew where he actually was we just knew he was pinned there for at least 45 minutes um and so nobody knew where to drive we just knew he was heading to main med um, which is our biggest hospital in Maine. It's not very big. Um, so yeah, nobody knew where he was, um, but we knew, or his girlfriend knew that he was going on a quick ride um, and somebody wasn't paying attention. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I have to let you know when this comes across, I feel no pain. I feel like this was very fast in the way that this was facilitated. And I really feel a sense of injustice there and my heart breaks for your family and I'm so sorry and I one thing and this is gonna sound so left field but just one parting thing I want to say that sounds funny is look and see yeah. if there's any stories of anyone being chased by a large elk or deer or angry cute animal like an animal I would be like oh it's like Bambi but no, it's not like Bambi. That sucker chased somebody and was like really aggressive. Do you have any family stories connected to that? I think it has to do with his son hunting. Um, he he had just went on a, a hunting trip and um, he got his first moose. Um, and I know that there was an orb um, directly above my nephew. Um, while he was out hunting and he did have a run in with a deer um i love it so it's yeah. like we we don't got no bambi here this is something serious but it comes across yeah. as wanting to reference right. that event and oftentimes the yeah. reason why they reference these events is a way to kind of symbolize something else so it's very interesting that that, yeah. that does get referred but there's such a connection to family i feel like people will see signs i feel like this is not the last time you and i are going to talk so I hope that it's I hope that. start, but we have more to delve into. And I, I'm so thankful yes. that you were able to join us tonight. So thank you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. So, I can't wait to tell his girlfriend. Yes, me too. And I would love to meet her as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. She would go insane. His kids need something so bad. Yes, well, I hope this is a start. Thank you so much, Brandy. I, thank you. Oh, such a sweetheart. You know, it's so interesting in readings, we find that kind of can go from uh, heavy and sad to funny and light. And that really sums up life, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, it's an amalgamation of, of a lot of things. And I just hope that in these readings, while we do cover the spectrum of human emotion, for me, what I like to think about when I'm laying in bed at night is the funny things, the happy things, the things that really reflect the essence of who someone was versus how they died. You know, sometimes we do have to talk about the specifics and the details that uh, may be a little heavy or hard to talk about, but it's really those funny memories, those levity, those moments of levity that 
I think, is how they want to be remembered most. Sometimes that even comes through as a silly memory involving being chased by a deer. <laughs> but all that to say, you know, when I think of some of the most meaningful readings I've ever done, uh, it's really interesting because what connects, and I always try to tell people this, especially being that I got my show when I was only 19 and we did a show regarding reading celebrities, the details that come in that substantiate a reading are not the things that you can Google. <laughs> it is the specifics, the dynamics, the family nuances, the awareness of so-and-so wasn't in contact with so-and-so. Um, details and kind of the true makeup of who a person is, for me, gets reflected symbolically in readings. And that's the kind of information I try to get. So I find it to be so interesting when you have these moments of lightness and joy and happiness. I think that's, for me, my, my greater takeaway. And what I hope you take away from it as well.